How's it going, everybody? And welcome back. It's been a uh, it's been quite a while since I've released a video um, since like literally right after I came back from Cisco Live. Now I did mention in that video, at least I'm pretty sure I did, that I was going to be going on vacation for a couple weeks, which I did, and I am back. I am uh, super pumped, ready to go. I have uh, kind of re-energized myself, if you, if you will. That's usually what vacations are supposed to do. So. Uh, a little bit of an update for everybody in case you haven't seen anything lately. Um, I'm actually going to be releasing a couple of videos at one time. So a uh, quick 10 second recap. Um, my job chain, my job role has changed. I'm no longer working for a large enterprise. I now work for a Cisco reseller in the Milwaukee area. My position also changed. I'm a solutions integration architect slash senior systems engineer. Uh, basically all I do is, well I shouldn't say all I do. Um, what I do now is I design and deploy solutions for customers. So that's a combination of route switch, security, um, pretty much it right now. Uh, I don't do much service provider work. Um, so because I don't do much service provider work, I've changed my focus because I'm focusing a lot now on ASA and iOS and Zombies Firewall and iWAN. Um, my, my focus has shifted. And so because of that and because of the amount of security stuff that I'm doing, I have made the switch from service provider to security. Now, I still will release service provider material in the future. So I still plan on pursuing service provider down the road. Um, I will release a CCNA and CCMP service provider courses eventually. Um, but they probably won't be coming out as quickly as some might have hoped. Now, if you were banking on that, I'm sorry. Um, it's just I've... I'm one person and I am stretched, I think, pretty thin so far. So I've made the switch over to security and I've already, as you can see, I've already started getting into it. Because I work for a Cisco partner, I have access to a lot of uh, software and things like that. So I've downloaded uh, things like ASA, I've downloaded ICE, I've downloaded the, w, the web security appliance, I've downloaded... Um, down, uh, fire, firepower, both the management console and the actual sensor itself. Um, I've downloaded a lot, um, and the reason for that is because this is these are all software images that I'm going to need to need to learn. Um, and I'm in the process of deploying a lot of AnyConnect for one of my customers. So um, in this video, I'm basically I've shifted gears, and now I'm in security pretty hardcore now. And what I'm going to be doing as we go along. In this video, I'm going to basically walk you through some basic uh, iOS to iOS uh, site to site VPN with pre shared keys with crypto maps. Now, I'm not actually going to sit there and type the commands in verbatim. I'm going to do a couple of show, show commands uh, to keep it pretty straightforward. Um, I don't want to waste a bunch of time going through the details. I've already done this stuff in the past, um, but basically, this is going to be I have a, a dedicated security playlist on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to be dedicating that, and then pretty much every blog, uh, I'll do a blog post and I'll do a video so that I'm constantly hitting it. And I, I'm hoping that it'll be beneficial for anybody out there that's looking to uh, learn this material. So I'm basically, I'm going through the CCNA track right now, just to, it's a, more of a refresh. It's been so long since I've really played with this stuff and it really needs a kind of a reboot, if you will. And then as soon as I'm done with CCNA security, I'm going to be jumping right into CCMP security and going in uh, headlong into that. Um, and uh, going to be pretty much that's what's going to be. Um, I'm actually going to be uh, here very soon. I'm going to be buying some uh, ASA 5512Xs uh, so that I can practice that. And that, the reason for that is because that is what is on the CCA security blueprint. Um, and there's a couple other platforms like. Uh, a 2504 wireless LAN controller and a router or a, a Cisco IP phone. So I will build a basically a CCA lab here at my house uh, for security, but it'll take a while for me to get to that level because there's a lot of material to cover. What I'm doing right now, because I've got a lot of ASA work to do, I'm focusing pretty heavily on ASA. So I'm going through the book, uh, all the documentation guides, and I'm basically going to be uh, adding a lot of content to my, my blog and to YouTube uh, highlighting that. So it's not going to be as quite as crisp as it would be if you were to go to my training site, Rikers Island Training, to, to do that. So what we're going to be taking a look at in this setup here is going to be 
an R1 to R4 connection where we're gonna set up crypto maps and stuff like that and cryptography. Now, one of the things that I'm doing is all of these devices are running on the same ESXi host and they are all working correctly. So right now I have an active VPN connection going between security PC1 and security PC4. Now what this means is these are all virtual machines. Every one of these is a virtual machine. And what I've done is I've set the, the, the networking up inside of my ESXi host to support the ability to where R1 and R4 can communicate with each other as regular network devices. So there is infrastructure between these devices that allows them to communicate. I've basically set the ASAs up, which I will be releasing a short ASA video with, along with this one uh, to highlight what I did on the ASAs. Basically, uh, all I did is I went in and uh, I created an ACL on the outside interface inbound to allow pretty much IP any, uh, any IP traffic, which will basically make the ASA just pass everything. And then what I do is on R1 and R4, I create a uh, phase one and phase two policy, a pre-shared key, IV1 for the most part, and uh, security PC1 and PC4 are able to communicate with one another just fine. So I'll be actually demonstrating how that works and go from there. Now the SAs are, I believe, set to a day or 86,400 seconds. So they're probably gonna, they're gonna stay up for a while. So it's not gonna be, you know, any whiz bang wow debugs. Um, but I will show you guys what this looks like and how it works. Pretty straightforward for the most part, but uh, we'll be taking a look at that. So the first thing I wanna do is bring over my topology here, or actually, I'm sorry, my, uh, my super putty connection. And basically what you're gonna have is I wanna just verify that I have connectivity between R1 and R4. So I'm gonna do a ping 10.2.4.4, and I can ping that all day. That basically indicates that there's communication between R1 to R4. Now the way this communication is going, it goes R1 to ASA1 to R2 to ASA2 to R4. So if I did a trace route to 10.2.4.4 numerically, I'm gonna go, uh, it, it shows only two hops. There's a reason for that. ASAs by default will show up as a, uh, a transparent uh, layer three hop. Now you can make the ASA show up in the trace uh, I have not attempted to do that. I know it's possible to be done, um, but uh, I really don't care. As long as I reach ability through a trace route, I know I'm in good shape. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the R1 config for uh, the VPN. I'm gonna walk you through the R4 config for the VPN, and then um, that'll pretty much be it. Uh, there's not a whole lot to this stuff. So let me go ahead and do a show run section crypto. Now the crypto itself is actually pretty straightforward. So, so there, it's broken down into two separate steps. Okay, so let me go ahead and bust out my pen pad real quick so that I can highlight that for you guys. I'm not gonna sit there. I'm not gonna type the command, commands in. Um, actually, I got a lot of crap on my uh, my pen my uh, pen pad. So I'm just gonna highlight what you guys need to focus on. There's two phases. You have phase one and you have phase two. The difference between the two is uh, basically, I uh, affectionately refer to this as, this is, well, not affectionately. Um, this is phase one, which is crypto ICAMP policy, which the policy number dictates its priority. So the lower the number, the higher the priority. And what I did here, as I set the encryption to be AES, the uh, advanced encryption ser uh, yeah, service. Um, then I set the hashing to be a SHA-256. The authentication is pre-share key, and it's, uh, we are using the Diffie-Hellman group two. Now, that's all well and great, right? It, that, that works. And then I have a crypto ISACAMP key Cisco address 10244, which basically this is saying, I want to form a VPN with R4 on this IP address using this key. So what's gonna end up happening is this key right here is gonna be encrypted and sent across to R4. R4 is gonna receive it. There's gonna be a hash ran against it. And as long as the hash comes out the same, we know that the, uh, the password is correct. So obviously I'm not gonna go into like minute details on here because I really don't want to. This portion right here is gonna be your phase two. Phase two is gonna be the data plane. So this right here is 
uh, basically control plane. This is what the routers are going to exchange with each other to basically say, okay, here's what I've got, here's what, uh, here's what I'm sending, here's what you should be sending, and as long as the two jive, meaning as long as they're identical. So whenever you're setting up a site-to-site -site crypto map based VPN, this right here has to match on both ends. Now you could go in and create multiple Isaac camp policies and then have variations in those policies. And what's gonna end up happening is both devices are gonna send information back and forth until they find a Isaac camp policy that they both agree on, meaning they all have identical configurations. Well, simple, uh, the simple math here is as long as you configure them the same and then copy and paste, that's all I do. So literally all I did was I created R1 config, and I've done this hundreds of times, so this is a piece of cake really. Um, I create the Isocamp policy, and then I copy and paste it with the Isocamp key. All I did is I changed the address, the remote IP that I want to appear with. I just changed that to be R1 for on R4. That's all I did. This is what I this is considered phase one, or what I like to refer to as the control plane, router to router communication. Now, the next one here is Crypto IPsec Transform Set. This is what is referred to as the data plane. This is what's actually going to encrypt the data that you're trying to get from PC1 to PC4. This is the actual data that's encrypting the traffic. So we're, we're using ESP AES to encrypt the data. Now, these two alone don't do anything. They have to be, uh, there has to be an access list to identify what traffic actually gets encrypted and there's gotta be a crypto map to basically glue everything together to allow the traffic to work. Now let's go ahead and do a show run uh, section access list. And what you're gonna see here is I have an IP access list, access list extended ACL. And it's a two liner. The first line here is what we're matching on currently. What we're saying is I wanna permit on any IP traffic that is coming from 192.168 dot zero slash 24 so this guy up here and is going to 192.168.4.0 slash 24 down here at security pc4 that is all that's needed so as long as it's being sourced from here and with a destination of this in the outer ip header you know you're in good shape now because the fact that crypto maps with ios actually don't apply or don't have an ip address there's not a logical interface that you're applying them to there's only one IP header, which is the original IP header. It's when you get into other things like GRE over IPsec, or you get into AnyConnect, things like that, where you have an additional IP address to where you have the outside interface and you have the inside interface. It makes it a little bit more interesting. But because we're dealing with crypto maps, it's only a single uh, source and destination IP header. Now, the next thing we're gonna take a look at here is the crypto map itself. The crypto map is where pretty much the magic happens. What you're doing here is you're saying uh, you're identifying the crypto map. You give it a name. When this case here I said C map, C map one, and it again the uh, this is the priority. So the lower the number, the better. Uh, it's an ISIC camp, IPsec ISIC camp policy, meaning that it's going to be a site to site VPN. I set the peer to be 10244. This one here and this one here, this this must match. If they do not match, then you will have problems. I set the transform set to T set. The name of my phase two transform set is T set. It's got to be equal. They've got to match. Then I say match address ACL, which is what this guy is down here. As long as traffic comes in from either one, either two of those subnets for as a source, I know I'm in good shape. Now what I get to do is I map all that together in the crypto map. Now, still nothing has happened. If I do a show run interface gig 1.11, this is what actually enables the cryptography. You have to place the crypto map C map underneath the interface that's going out to the provider. What this does is it goes ahead and when it, it enables uh, Isocamp globally, it turns it on, and then as soon as any traffic that is sourced from this address going to this address, comes through the ACL, if we do a show IP access list, you'll see that there are 19 matches, meaning that traffic has come through the router, 
with a source of 192.168.1.0 slash 24 going to 192.168.4.0 slash 24. It's a match. Now that's basically the extent of R1's config. Now it's really no different than on R4. The configuration is nearly identical with the exception of the remote peer address. So show run section crypto. You have a different uh, remote peer here and a different remote peer here. Everything else is identical. If you do a show run section access list, you'll see that all I've done is I swapped the source and destination. So what was the source is now the destination. What was the destination is now the source. That's all I've done. Nothing very uh, fancy, smancy. So that's what's actually happening here. Now, that's the details behind the scenes. I mean, there's really nothing to it. If I do a show crypto ISA SA, that's going to show me a phase one communication. That means that R1 and R4 are communicating with each other. Now, as long as this comes up, you know you're in good shape. Now, what I'm not doing at the moment is I'm not sending any traffic across the wire. So if I do a show IPsec SA, this is going to be the communication between the endpoints. Now, if I do um, if I do pipe include in caps and D caps, yes. Okay. So what I want you to notice is that there is well, there's a little bit of data going back and forth. Oh, you know why? I know why. I know why that's happening. That is because I have a remote desktop session set up on um, on one of these guys, and I'm pinging. So let's go ahead and bring this over. There is, there's a reason why these numbers are incrementing. And that's because I have a, one, I have a remote desktop session. So what I've basically done here is I have, uh, let's go ahead and bring this down. Let's go ahead and minimize it. So this is, I'm, I'm on the VM, the virtual machine of security PC1. And what I've done is I've opened up a remote desktop connection to security PC4. And I know it's a little hard to read because it's so small, but what I'm doing, if I come over here and I do my IP config here, I am 192.168.1.2, right? Security PC1. If I come over here and I do this guy, I am security PC1. If I come over to this guy, and the remote with desktop connection, and I scroll all the way down, then I go ahead and I do a uh, command prompt and I scroll back up, I am security PC4. So that's, I'm proving to you that I have end-to-end -end communication. And what I've done is I am from, from one VM, so let's go ahead and minimize this real quick, from security PC1, which is this, this icon right here on, on the, uh, the topology, is this virtual machine, okay? And what I've done is because I have the, crypt, uh, because I have the VPN set up, I've actually remote desktoped into this guy right here. So if I go ahead and pull up that VM, I am I am logged on. It says that right there. I'm logged on and um, I'm logged in via that. So I actually I, I can actually close that out because there's no reason to keep that open. I've got that open, and what I'm doing is on security PC4, on PC4 I am pinging security PC1 and you can see that it is actively working. Now there is a caveat here. For the longest time, and I spent several hours trying to figure out why this wasn't working, and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a little mad that I had to do this, but I wanted to get results, so this is why I did it. In the firewall, the firewall, I actually had to disable the firewall. And by disabling the firewall, I was able to get the ping response. I can't tell you why. If you know, put it in the comments. I'd be curious to find out. But I had to disable the firewall on both PC1 and PC4, and that allowed the, the, the ping response. And here's what was giving it, giving it away. If you look here on, on router four, I'm, I was seeing packets encapsulated and decapsulated, meaning that I had bidirectional. Because remember, the, uh, the IPsec essays, not the ISACAMP SA. The ISA Camp SA between R1 and R4 is bidirectional, which means they have to exchange each other, traffic with each other, like OSPF and EIGRP would exchange routing updates and hellos. It's bidirectional. 
once both of them are talking to each other and you have your phase one policy set up, they're going to talk to each other. It's bi-directional. That's not the case with ICCAMP or uh, IPsec SAs. They are just like MPLS traffic engineering tunnels. They're unidirectional in nature, meaning you have R1 can have a connection to R4, but R4 may not have a connection to R1. Now that that's okay. That you know, it's really not going to be. Um, I guess that could work in some res some respects. But the problem I'm having is I was looking for bidirectional traffic. Now I've tried to troubleshoot this in the past in, in real deployments. So the first thing I look at once I get phase one up is I look at phase two SA. And the first thing that I look at is for encapsulation and decapsulation. This indicates to me and to you that there is data being encrypted. The proxy ACL is being, is being hit and traffic is going through the crypto map and being encrypted. Now, if my numbers here were not incrementing at all, if they were just, let's say you had traffic going uh, encapsulated, being encrypted and being sent over, that is traffic leaving the box, going out to its remote peer, okay? This one right here is traffic coming in from the remote end to you, okay? This is the, uh, this is the inbound SA, this is the outbound SA the security association. As long as you have numbers incrementing and you're getting ping responses or, uh, I can't always say that ping responses are going to be a good indicator, but for me in a lab just to prove that the VPN is working correctly and is passing data, that's a good test. Um, because you might not allow ping to go across the VPN. It's up to you and what you allow. But at any rate, uh, let's say you're allowing only HTTP traffic. If you're trying to get across the wire and, or across, I'm sorry, across the VPN, and you're not getting the HTTP connection to come up, there that could be an indication. The first place I would look at it would be like, okay, well, are you sending and receiving traffic? Because here's the thing, anything that's TCP based needs to have bi-directional communication. So there's going to be a SYN, there's going to be an, an ACK, a SYN ACK ACK going back and forth. And if you're not getting that three-way handshake, whether it's encrypted or clear text, like port 80 or 443 for your encrypted traffic, if you're not getting that bi-directional communication, there's a problem there. And that's why I, this is the first place I looked at. And I was seeing traffic incrementing. I was seeing these numbers climb, as you see it right now. They are climbing. This, this is a live demo at this point. I mean, I've configured everything already ahead of time. But this is a live demonstration. So it's actually working. Now, and you can see the, the pings below, and I am actively remote desktoped. I could theoretically move a file between the uh, between uh, the, the PCs. Now here's the caveat, and this is a big caveat. The CSR1000B has a data plane limit of 100 kilobits per second. That's not a lot of data, which means that if I wanted to do like a large like two meg file transfer, yeah, two megs is huge, right? Um, it would take forever to copy. Now if I had a, you know, 30K file, I should be able to copy that across the network relatively soon. So the, cure, uh, the, the thing that I wanted you guys to see was that in a VM to VM connection, this is possible. So that's one of the things that I'm talking about here when I, when I refer to, you know, I want to prove it beyond that. And it's one of the things that I also want to do now, now that I've actually got this working uh, with, uh, with the CSRs is, uh, and I did try this on the iOS V image and I was running into issues and I wasn't sure what the problem was, so I went to the CSR, which I've had better luck with. Um, I will be trying this with MPLS L3 VPN, as well as um, CSRs when I do route sw for the CCA route switch course that I'm currently working on. I will be trying it there as well to see if it's actually gonna work. Because, well, to be honest with you, it's, you know, if it works with site-to-site uh, -site VPN, I can only assume it's gonna work with MPLS L3 VPN. So we'll have to see how that comes out and plays. So that's pretty much where that's at. That's pretty much it, guys. Um, again, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, I'm back in the saddle again, and I'm really excited to be get, getting forward, uh, moving here. I will be covering um, on a pretty routine basis. I will be doing blog posts, and which will stay pretty short. I'm not going to do anything really, really long. Um, and I will be hitting. Basically, you could take the CCI security blueprint. Anything that's on there, well, CCNA, CCMP, and CCIE, but I'm going to label it as security because I don't want to pigeonhole myself into anything C, uh, certification specifically. I'm going to be focusing on technology implementation. 
Now what that's going to allow me to do is I'll be hitting iOS security, I'll be hitting ASA security, and when I mean security, that's going to be platform and product. I'll be doing ICE, WSA, Firepower, the whole nine yards. So expect to see a lot of content coming out here in the near future. And um, as I go through, uh, I have a CCNA in security, so I will be releasing a CCNA course on security here as soon as I feel like I'm up to speed on the technologies and ready to roll. And then I'll be rolling out how, um, once I get my CCNP in security, I'll be rolling out a bunch of content for that. And then same thing for CCA when I get to that point as well. But I'm gonna be, you're gonna see a lot of stuff coming from me here in the near future. If there's anything you'd like me to, if you'd like to, to see something covered, uh, please feel free to let me know. I will be more than happy to uh, I will definitely read whatever the request is, and if it's feasible, um, I might not cover it right away, but like let's say for instance you hit me up and say, hey Rob, I'd love to see you know, dual site DMBPM with IP2 uh, encryption, that's doable. Uh, I'd like to be able to see easy VPN on ASA, that might take me a little bit. Um, I don't know if I have any customers running that, but I would still like to learn how easy VPN works. But there's a new, uh, new kid in town called FlexVPN, and I'll be hitting that pretty heavily as well. But um, I'm gonna be covering a lot of content here in the near future, so stay tuned. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, but like just, just to say, hey, how you doing? Dr drop a line in the comments. Please hit that subscribe button. We're trying to grow this channel. Get us out there. Uh, share this as much as you can, because I'd love people to stop by and, and learn. Um, so hopefully you're as enthusiastic about this stuff as I am. And until next time, guys, take it easy.